Yes, we still have time. All right, so I, I will tell you about my story with science communication and how we came to do this stuff. Uh, we start with the second presentation. I'm sorry, but... <laughs> Okay, so this is where I was born. That's Yemen, yeah? That's the village. Um, it's surrounded by farms, basically. My father wanted me to either become a farmer, basically. Well, actually, become a farmer, that's it. But I myself wanted to do something else, yeah? I was interested in education and learning, and I was interested in reading. This is something that we have all acknowledged, we have all to acknowledge. Sometimes your parents will force you, hey, either a doctor or an engineer, and you have to choose. Say, no, I don't want. I have to follow my passion, because that's my future, and that's what I'm going to be. And that's what you really have to do. So I challenged the society and decided to go for what I really want, to follow my path in education. Uh, so, I got a scholarship and I went to Pakistan to study. I got my bachelor's in biotechnology, which is just what I wanted because I'm passionate about science. As I was about to graduate from Pakistan, I applied for a scholarship to Germany. And I went back to Yemen and I worked in this lab it's a quality control laboratory. I worked there for six months, waiting for the response from the German scholarship. And then I received that response from the German scholarship. They said, all right, you have been accepted uh, out of 1,050 people. And they only choose five. Thank you, thank you. But there is a big challenge. There is a big challenge. The guys at this job, they told me, why don't you stay for two more months, we turn your contract into permanent, then you can travel to Germany and still get money. But the Germans said, no, you have to come now. So I had to quit this job. So I quit this job, I went to Germany, but I didn't have a university admission. That's the problem. The scholarship guys said, you have four months. During these four months, you're going to study German language and you have to secure an admission. If you don't secure an admission, you're going to lose your scholarship and you're not gonna be able to apply again. So that's a problem. Unfortunately, by the time I was in Germany, all the universities already closed <laughs> the admission. So that's a big problem. I can't go back and request my old job and I have to face this big hurdle. I sent over 100 applications even though after the deadline was already closed, you know, to emails and uh, they just didn't really bother. Most of them rejected it and the rest didn't even respond. One day, as I was like four weeks away from losing my scholarship, I sent 70 emails to people and I told them, would you please make a, an exception? Just take a look at my document. And they just said no, except one professor. Professor Sebastian Splinger. This guy believed in me. He said, sure, let me look into your documents. He looked into my documents and he saw an opportunity. He scheduled an interview, which I passed. The scholarship was saved. I got accepted, finally. <laughs> but there was a problem because in Pakistan, I was learning only theoretical. Now, in Germany, it's very complicated. It's a far more advanced educational system. It's all practical. They expect you to come ready, prepare. You know what you're doing. You know what you, yeah? So it was a very big transition, and it was full of complications. And I went to this professor again, and I told him, do you think that you have made the right choice by accepting me here? He said, well, the fact that you are here tells me that you want to change the situation. So don't worry. I will support you and I'm here for you. And that's, that's what I love about you know, Germany, is that they really support their students. And I encourage all professors to always support their students. So I managed to go through and catch up to the level of the other students 
studying triple the times of what other students did. That's the university where I studied, and then I gave the graduation speech. I graduated in 2015. I started my PhD, and then I quit after three months. Why? <laughs> because I realized that what I want to do is educate people, communicate science. Sometimes you have to know. You say, hey, I'm good at this, but I'm also good at this. Which one I'm better at? Which one I can serve the society more with? And then you go for the one that you want. Yeah, the one that you can serve the society with. And I went for science communication. I joined Futurism, a media company in New York. We worked together. I learned a lot of skills while I was working with them. But then after some time, I noticed that I'm not learning anything new anymore. I get my salary, I get my money, but I'm not learning anything. I am young, I'm, I have energy, and I'm capable of doing more. So I say goodbye. You have to know when you do it, yeah? It's easy, to, it's easy for success to disguise it, for failure to disguise itself as a success, yeah? If you are still young and your job is no longer contributing more to your growth, then you have to go. So I, I continued my work on science communication. Now the page has 28.5 million followers across the globe, 9 billion views, and it just keeps skyrocketing in numbers. It's now number four globally. And if you look, Bayern Munich is actually just one step ahead, actually, two steps ahead. So soon I'll also catch up with them. I am now giving uh, talks internationally, TED Talks, and you know, communicating science beyond just online media. I'm also going out there and communicating science to the general public in different platforms. And I went back to the professor to thank him for success. I gave him a grant of 50,000 euros for his research. We have to always pay back to the people who contributed to our success. Whether it's a platform, whether it's a country, whether it's a person, we have to do that. It's an obligation if you're a good person. <laughs> I now want to branch out to more than just science communication, so I started making science fiction movies. This is my first movie, and it's, uh, I don't know if we can play the video, it's one minute long, but we have limited time. Can we? I think we can play the video then, behind the scene, when we are filming the movie. Mm, it doesn't look like it's gonna play because we transferred the Okay, but what I want to say is that I'm branching out beyond science communication, making science fiction movies. This is the first poster of the movie, which is supposed to be ready within five months or less. I also want to start writing science communication books, so this is my next goal. And the biggest goal of my life is this. Hashim al Ghaili's Foundation for Education and Innovation. Now, this foundation is going to do three things. First of all, it, has, it will support students who, have been in the, who are still in the same situation that I was in. Yeah, I have experienced this myself. It's frustrating, and I want to make a change. So the scholarships that will be provided by this foundation will go to the people who are talented and they are ready, ready to make a change. The second thing that it will do is it will find new ways to use technology to improve education. We have been using the same stuff, textbooks, same style, it's been like that for a long time. So the foundation is going to bring new technologies, use them in education so that we can make a change. And finally, this foundation is going to bring together decision makers, policy makers, and scientists so we can make rational decisions. Climate change, for example, it's a big problem. Most of our fate lies within the hands of policymakers. Now we have to make them aware, we have to give them the signs, and this foundation will increase their awareness on different topics that concern our planet. And that's it. Thank you.